Hi everyone, this is Sharon here. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to see about five mental models and how they can be adopted for a successful career in data science. We spend 50% or more of our adult life in our careers. We make many decisions that have a direct or an indirect impact, like switching jobs, moving on to a different city, the course that you want to study, the hobby project that you want to work on, the topic that you want to learn in data science. All these are like many simple decisions, but that has an indirect or an indirect impact on your career success. It is really important to make an well-informed decisions in order to make sure that you have a successful data science career. It is natural for all of us to make some mistakes. It is okay to make some mistakes as well because we learn from our mistakes, but we don't have the luxury to make too many wrong decisions. And hence, in this video, I'm going to show you how mental models help in clear thinking as well as in making the better decisions and how you can embrace all these mental models in your life as well as in the data science projects that you are working on. Coming to the most important question, how a mental model can help in your successful career in data science or in any other field. Mental models helps in training our brain in critical thinking and hence it helps in best understanding the problem. The success of any data science project doesn't actually depend upon the technical capabilities of the team. It doesn't really depend on what kind of algorithms that you can implement or what kind of programming language that you know or your team can code on. What actually matters the most is how well do you understand the problem. So the better you understand the problem, you would be able to come up with a better solution. So everything else is set in trick, like what language that you use, what algorithms that you are going to implement and and what should be the platform that you should be working on, like everything comes next. The most ultimate important thing is how good you understand the problem. I find mental models very helpful to understand ourselves, also our goals. It helps to get answers to some of the interesting questions or very important questions like what should I upstill myself in order to increase my earning potential? What should I be doing in order to reach my goal? What should be the data science topic that I should be learning that helps in moving me towards my goal? Do I have all the opportunities in my current job in order to reach my goal? What should I be looking forward in my next data science role? What are all my strengths and weaknesses? It helps in getting answers to some of these very important questions that helps to understand ourselves and hence make a better decision for a successful career. So in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to see about five mental models. The mental models that we are going to cover in this video are the first principles thinking, second order thinking, inversion, map versus territory, and Feynman's technique. These are all the five mental models that helps in clear thinking and making a better decisions. We are going to see one by one and then we are going to see how to adopt these mental models in our daily life or in our career to ensure that we succeed. Coming to the first mental model, the first principle is thinking. This mental model helps in clear thinking. It helps in better understanding the problem. In any data science problem, the most important factor is how could you understand the problem. You should not rely on the inputs provided by a single team. You need to talk to different stakeholders. You need to talk to uh, different sets of customers to see what they are saying. You need to rely on the information that is available online forums, like uh, the feedbacks that the customers are providing and what the customers are speaking to the call centers uh, people to understand what are all the various problems. You need to have a holistic understanding of the problem in order to come up with an best solution. I got introduced to first principles thinking when I was reading a book about Elon Musk. So in this book, the author explains how Elon Musk had an option of buying a rocket for SpaceX for about 65 million US dollars or build it by himself. If Elon Musk had gone to the first option, like buying a rocket for 65 million US dollars, the initial failures would have been enough to shut down the SpaceX. They wouldn't have got the money in order to pursue their dream. What Elon Musk actually did, he went for the other option. Like he chose the option to build a rocket by himself. So what he did, he understand, he understood what are all the various raw materials that is required in order to build a rocket. What are all the expensive raw materials where they can be sourced for a cheaper price? In some cases, what are all the various raw materials that can be swapped with a cheaper alternative and better performance? So he was able to do all these analysis and rebuild and rocket for a one tenth of the actual cost. So first principles thinking helps in better understanding the problem to its fundamental elements and hence come up with a better solution. Adopting the first principles thinking is quite simple. It is a four step process that any one of us can adopt in any of the problems that we are trying to solve. 
The first step is to understand the problem to the best of your ability. You need to make sure that you read a lot, you talk to various people so that you understand the problem to the best of your ability. The second one is you need to break down the problem to its fundamental elements. You need to continue breaking down the problem until it can't be broken any further. The third one is we need to change one or two of the fundamentals. And the final step is to rebuild the solution uh, that is much better than the original solution or that is much that is that is able to solve the problem that is existing. This is the simple approach that can be adopted in any data science problems or in any problem that you are working on. Another popular example of first principles thinking is the invention of the rolling suitcase. People for centuries have been used to carry weights on their heads or the shoulders. Around 400 BC, we invented bullet carts in order to move heavy loads from one place to the another. But only in the 1970s, we thought about attaching the wheels to a personal like a suitcase in order to move it. And hence, what we need to do is we need to understand that first principle thinking helps in coming up with a very new solution. We break down the problem and try to replace some of the existing components with a new one and see how a solution can be built. First principles thinking can be used to solve many data science problems. If you are interested how to adopt the first principle thinking in solving a data science problem, check out, and check out the video which I will be attaching in the top as well as providing in the description which explains exactly how first principles thinking can be used in order to adopt in solving a data science problem. The second mental model that we are going to see is the second order thinking. While trying to solve problems, what people do is people think about the immediate outcome. They don't actually think about the consequences of those outcomes, like what happens in the next two months, what happens in four months, six months, or one year down the line after implementing this solution. And hence what happens is many of those solutions look good in shorter term, but actually um, results in more issues in longer term. And second order thinking can exactly help us in order to understand what is the outcome and what could happen in the future. It helps in thinking what majority of people are blind to. And hence, it helps in coming up with amazing results. Not adopting other mental models like first principles thinking should still be fine. Like you will be able to come up with some kind of a solution, but not adopting a second order thinking can result in huge problems. Sometimes it could be like a very, very costly. One famous example of failure to not use second order thinking is the Titanic tragedy. There weren't enough measures in place to handle complications. The ship, which carried more than 1,500 people, had only 16 lifeboats, just enough for one third of the people on board. The crew was not equipped with proper lightning, did not have access to binoculars. So the failure to not use the second order thinking can be very, very, very expensive. So it is really important for us to use second order thinking while we come up with any solution to see what kind of outcome it could cause. In a data science contest, maybe if we take a simple example, like let's say we want to retain the customers, we want to improve the retention rate of the customers. So in order to solve this problem, the data science team would generally come up with an approach to identify all the customers who have an higher propensity to churn. After identifying all these customers, what would be what would happen is that these customers could be provided with a higher discount in order to ensure that all these customers stay in the platform or continue to use the product. But what could happen? Like what would be the impact? What would be the consequences of this particular solution being rolled off? Some of the consequences could be the impact on the other existing customers. The customers who are staying on the platform for a longer period can be very unhappy if they come to know about these discounts that are being offered to few customers. How much longer these customers would end up using the product or using the platform? Will it be worth enough to re retain these customers by offering them heavier discounts? Will this result in a price war with the competition? And these are all the various consequences that could happen. So we need to think of of all these constituencies, what that could happen and how best we can have the strategy in place. Or instead of coming up with these two stones only to the customers with higher propensity to churn, what can, what can also happen is we can also ensure that all the loyal customers are being offered the highest discounts or being provided with some kind of an additional services to ensure that they don't churn off and they are not happy with something like this that comes up uh, for very few customers. And hence, what, what is important is the solution is not important. Like preventing a customer from churn 
is very simple that we can offer them discounts and then help them retain but what is important is what is the consequences of it what might happen to these customers after two months after four months after six months will they be still using the platform or will they get the discount and maybe use the discount and move to a competition for a much better discounts so these are all the various things that we need to think of before rolling off any recommendation uh, that comes up from the data science team the third mental model that we are going to see today is inversion inversion is kind of the opposite thinking like thinking from a point of view that is exactly opposite to what the normal people will think of inversion thinking might not help you in coming up with the best solutions but what will definitely happen is inversion thinking will try to identify all the issues it will try to exactly avoid all the problems that could be very expensive sometimes i find inversion thinking can be enlightening too it will open up an area where like you have you had no idea previously or where you have been completely blind off let's see the application of inversion thinking in a very simple example let's say one of your goal is to learn a new data science topic let's say you want to learn about the nlp concept what will happen you have multiple options that like you can enroll for a course which is on online you can go for a paid course you can go for a free course you can reach out to one of your friend who has a good knowledge about this particular topic and maybe work with him to understand more about this particular topic or you can choose a project which helps you in learning this particular concept so what inversion thinking will help you to do is it will help you to think about various things that might come up as an issue what are all the various things that could stop you from learning this particular new topic it could be your time it could be your personal commitments it could be some of the other things that you are working on but it will try to exactly identify all the blockages that could come up uh, when you are pursuing to learn this particular new topic inversion thinking not only helps in identifying the obstacles but it also helps in eliminating the less suitable options so by using inversion thinking you would be able to identify the various options that are not going to help you if you are a particular person who helps some kind of a push in order to learn a particular topic maybe the free online courses might not be of help to you because no one is going to push you and it the responsibility lies on you to learn this but if you enroll for a new course online if you made a payment for a particular course maybe that can push you in order to ensure that you complete that particular course if you work on a particular project let's say that could also be very helpful that you have a goal of completing a project and by completing the project you also learn a new topic and inversion thinking helps in, def in, in definitely identifying the various obstacles that could come up let's see one more example of application of inverse thinking in a data science project so let's say the problem statement is to increase the customer base one way to increase the customer base is to acquire new customers but while solving this particular problem it is important to use inverse thinking we need to understand what are all the various issues that could cause an existing customers to move out an existing customers to churn and hence what happens is we not only focus on on strategies to acquire new customers we also focus on things that should uh, that should be avoided that should that could actually lead to a customer churning off from the platform and hence what happens is we would be able to acquire new customer on the same time we would be also able to ensure that the existing customers are not leaving the platform and hence the customer base actually grows if we focus only on acquiring the new customers maybe a lot of existing customers could be churning and hence there won't be any net gain in the customer base so it is really important to use inverse thinking in some of the data science problem to ensure that we attack the problem from a holistic point of view the fourth mental model that we are going to see is the map versus territory what is a map a map is a snapshot at a point in time whereas when we say territory it is the actual reality when you use a map sometimes uh in real life like when you are on an actual territory it would be much different that would be much uh, uh things could be much different for example your map could say that you need to you need to take a right at a particular point in time which was based on a snapshot in the past but maybe today there is some kind of a road work that is happening and you are not able to take the right you have to go with an other alternate route and hence what i'm trying to say here is sometimes map might not be helpful you need to adopt you need to use the map of course but you need to adopt based on the actual reality 
So when I say map, what I what I actually mean is I actually mean the strategies that we design based on our previous success, the recommendations that comes up from various booths or the white papers or research papers, and the step-by-step -step guides that helps us in achieving a particular goal. Whereas when I say territory, it means the actual reality that we are trying to face. We can make use of maps, we can make use of the strategies from our previous success, but it doesn't ensure a future success. If we have been successful in solving the problem in our past, it doesn't really mean that we would be able to solve the same problem in the future as well. Because in the future, things are changing. Like the environment would have changed, the customers would have changed, the, the, the stakeholders, the people who involved in that particular issue would have been changed and hence, it is not really a guarantee that the previous success could also ensure a future success. So it is really important for us to understand. It doesn't mean that we need to disregard all the recommendations, all the learnings that we got from the previous success, all the recommendations that have been provided maybe in a research paper or all the things that is recommended from a step-by-step step guides. It is important for us to embrace all of it, like uh, get the insights, get the learnings from it, but what is more important is to understand what is the actual reality that we are facing and how those maps, like those recommendations, those guides could be adopted in order to ensure that we are successful. Some of the questions that can help in better understanding the map as well as adopting to the actual territory that we are facing would be like you're asking the questions like who created the map? Why was it created? When was this map created? Can it, can it be still usable? What should be the changes that could be, it should be made to this particular map in order to ensure that it will be successful in the scenario that I am trying to face? What are all the various areas that I should maybe ignore in the map? What are all the various assumptions that has been made in the map? Is it going to cause any issues for me in the future? So these are all the some of the questions that helps in better understanding the map or better understanding when I say map, better understanding about the recommendations or the uh, the recommendation that comes up from a particular book or recommendation based on the previous success to see how they can be adopted to the current scenario that we are trying to face. If I take an example in a data science contest, let's say you have been successful in reducing the customer churn for an online merchandiser. It doesn't really mean that you will be successful in reducing the churn for all online merchandisers because the customers are different, the environment is different, the usage pattern is different, the touch points are different, and the people working for those platforms or those products are all different too. And hence, your previous success might not guarantee a future success, but you can pick up the learning from your previous success and see how they can be adopted in order to come up with a new strategy for the new uh, problem that you are trying to solve. So what I'm trying to say is, the success strategy can't be like one strategy that can be used for multiple problems. What should happen is we need to understand that there is a difference between a map as well as a territory. So map is a snapshot at a point in time. So we need to use the map, get the insights from it, but adopt it to the actual reality to ensure that we are successful. The fifth mental model that we are going to see is the Femans technique. Femans is the all time greatest physicist he is very popular for breaking down the complex problems into simple terms. This technique can be adopted in order to learn any complex terms. So this can be adopted in like multiple ways on a data science project that you are working on or in your data science career. It can be very useful in order to learn a very complex topic. It can be useful in order to communicate a set of complex insights to the business stakeholders because it is very important that you translate all these complex insights in a simple term to the business stakeholders and hence they can be actioned on. It can be adopted in order to provide a training session for the new joiners or people who's beginning their career in data science. It helps in breaking down the complex terms into simple terms and hence it can be explained in an easy way. It is very easy to adopt the female statement in the problems that we are trying to solve. The first step is to understand the problem, write down what you understand about the particular problem. So what needs to happen is you need to make sure that you write down about the problem that you are trying to solve in simple terms. If it is the first time that you are trying to solve the problem, what you can do is you can try to read about the particular topic, listen to various videos about the particular topic to get some understanding about it and then write down in your own words about what you understand about the particular topic. 
if it is not the new topic that you are trying to learn if it is about the insights that needs to be communicated to the business stakeholders what you can do is you can write down what you understand about that particular insights in a very simple term to see if it is if it is making sense the second step is how would you communicate this to a tween so tween is a kid who is aged between 10 and 12 the challenges of explaining a topic to a kid who is aged between 10 and 12 is they have a shorter attention time span. So you have a very limited time within which you need to explain it. And they don't have the understanding of the complex terms. So you should not use any complex terms. You should never use any jargons. So these are all some of the challenges that uh, that is present when you try to explain it to a kid uh, aged 10 to 12. So by, by trying out this, what would happen is you will get a better understanding about the problem you will be able to explain the problem in a much simple terms. You would be able to explain the insights in much simple terms. And hence, it is most likely that the people or the person who is in the other end would be able to absorb it or like it will help you to better understand the particular concept. The third step is understand the gaps. When you try to explain it, it to a tween, what you will be able to see is you will be able to understand the areas where you are struggling to explain in a simple term you'd be able to identify the areas where you need to focus on, where you need to maybe come up with a better narrative. And the final step is refine your narrative, put the things in the sequence, in the proper sequence and come up with a proper narrative that, uh, that helps to convey the idea in a very simple way. So it could be, it could be like uh, the topic that you are trying to teach to someone else. It could be an insight that you are trying to convey to the business stakeholders, or it could simply be the topic that you are learning for yourself. So by coming up with a very simple narrative, it helps in better understanding the particular topic, and it will be very handy when you want to recall or recall it, uh, the particular topic. So all these are all the five mental models that can be very useful in solving various data science problems and helps will help you in a successful data science career. So that's it for today. If you like what I'm doing uh, here, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Apart from uh, the videos about data science, I also have an 100 day data science course where I talk about, I talk and teach about various data science topics that is required in order to start a career in data science. That's it for now and I see you in the next video. Bye until then.